Let me ask you something. Are you more of a product person or more of a marketing person? Do you like creating things or do you like promoting things? Do you like creating value or do you like leveraging that value? The answer to your question is really important as it relates to how I think you'll best find success in whatever you get involved in. Let me explain a little bit further. So I've been in business now for 18 years, my own business. And over that period of time, there's been times when I've had to wear many different hats. But the two big hats for me has been either the product hat, where I'm in product creation mode and I'm creating value, something that I can sell. And then there's the promotion hat, where I sell that thing that I created or leverage the value that I created. And they are very different disciplines, two very, very different disciplines. And it's almost like you need a different kind of personality to be doing any one of them well. And more recently, I've been working on a new software product and I've just been loving it. My, my mode, my natural mode is to create, to create products and services, to create value. It's not to leverage. Oftentimes, in fact, the times when I've had my best results is when I team up with someone else to leverage and promote the value that I've created. But I'm just sort of getting towards the stage now of this new project where the product is becoming ready to start promote out to an audience. And, you know, I don't have a promotion partner as such. And as a result, I'm starting to change hats <laughs> or I'm in that transitional period between you know, focusing on product to moving more towards promoting that product and leveraging that value that I've been creating through, through my team. And tell you what, if you haven't done this before, it is a very different mode of thinking. You've got to, you know, change and shift your thinking from a value creation mode to a leverage creation mode. So you still create on both things, but you create in a different way. And uh, it's actually been really interesting on this latest project. I've really been enjoying the leverage and promotional side of things a lot more than I have in the past. So maybe I've learned a few things that's now helping me from my past projects. But definitely I can tell how my thoughts are shifting. They're shifting to a different frequency. Whereas before it was like so ingrained in thinking about how do I create value for the customer? What is it that the customer wants and how do we create a solution that meets that want or need or problem or desire, whatever it is. So our product, you know, that product thinking is very much what you're ingrained in when you're developing your product. Now, to get that product promoted, you need a different kind of thinking. You need to start thinking about, okay, how do I get this product to the customer? It's not about now solving problems anymore. It's now about how do I get this solution to the customer? What's the best way of doing that? Where are they? Who are they? Am I sure I've got the right problem that I'm solving for them? And if I do, how do I communicate that best? That's all marketing. And it's, I guess, what you could call product marketing, right? So I'm just reading an interesting book on product development or product a product manager versus a marketing or pro, what's called a product, yeah, product manager versus a product marketing manager. They, sorry, I'm, I'm still reading the book, so I'll, I'll have a review on that later. But very, very different modes of thinking. And what I'm finding at the moment is as I'm shifting gears, so to speak, or shifting hats from the product creation mode to product promotion mode, my thoughts are now much more starting to think about things like content. That's part of the reason why I'm doing these videos. It's not the only reason, but I'm catching myself during my normally creative time, say when I'm going for a walk in the mornings or when I have a shower or when I generally have off times when I don't have to be actively be productive or working, my creative mind just goes crazy. Instead of thinking about solutions for the product, you know, to make the product better, my mind is starting to think more about how do I engage the end customer? So it's interesting having that that shift taking place and I'm, I can spot it uh, so clearly now. It's, it's so clear. And I've often thought about, do I hire someone to do this go-to-market strategy for us? You know, GTM, everybody talks about GTM in the software world, go-to-market. Do I hire someone to do it for me or do, it, do I do it myself? Maybe I just do it myself to begin with and then once it's sorted, once we got product market fit, we get someone else to help us. These are all sort of questions I've been thinking about a lot. One of my mentors recommended strongly that if you're the founder, you know, uses what it calls a founder-led, I think it's founder-led go-to-market strategy. 
where it's the founder of the business that does the initial promotion and marketing of the product that they've been developing. And I'm doing the same in this particular case, at least for the beginning. And even though I can afford to hire someone to do that, I believe personally that it's better to do it yourself for, well, the main reason really is so that you can have a finger on the pulse in terms of who you're going out to, what the messaging is you got to use, what kind of language, and that feeds back into the product. So any any marketing work you're doing is really tied into your product development as well. They don't live in isolation. They merged to a great deal, even though they require different activities to run them, they very much cross over in a big way. I mean, the messaging, for example, has to line up with what you're offering, like the problems that you're solving must be communicated in your messaging, right? So if you don't do that right, then people won't know what you're offering and you won't be able to sell them on on your idea or on your product. Where am I going with this? Yeah, so I think it's better if you do it yourself at the beginning because you learn. And then as you learn from the market, you feed that straight back into your product. The other thing that I'm finding very interesting now with at least this project, is that part of creating these videos is forcing me to create or to use our own product as well. It's a video-based product. I don't want to reveal too much just yet, but it's forcing me to also use my product. So it's kind of like a double whammy. I'm using the product and so we're eating our own dog food. And at the same time, I'm starting to think about what is the messaging we've got to create for our product and our our marketing and how do we best get the message out there to the right people. So very different kind of thinking. But I do think as a founder, you got to be involved in both at the beginning. And then as you grow, as you get product market fit, and as you start getting more revenue, you can then start outsourcing the bits that you're not as gifted for. So in my case, as revenue grows, I'll certainly be looking for someone to help with the marketing and promotion side of the business so that I can go back to where I'm the best at, you know, what suits me best for my personality type, which is the product creation side of things. Anyway, what are your thoughts? Uh, Are you doing any kind of projects where there's both a product or value creation component, but also a promotional component? And do you do both? Or have you found a way to separate them out, build a team around one or the other and do that successfully as well from the get go? Love to know your thoughts. Let me know in the comments if there are comments available. Otherwise, I'll see you inside my next video. Bye-bye.